Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Time for us to take you through the pages of our national dailies. Uh, we do have Ezekiel Yaitoku who joins the conversation. Good morning, Ezekiel Yaitoku. It's good to have you join us and Happy New Year. All right, we'll probably seem like we can hear. Um, Good morning Hattonfall, and because... happy new year. Sorry, I was muted. Happy new year, and um, always a pleasure to be with you. Thanks All for right. joining us. Thank you uh, for joining. Uh, we we'll start off with the Punch newspaper this morning, and as always, we'll be paying attention to the top stories on the Punch newspaper. The banner caption for the Punch says, "PDP orders kick as Buhari dismisses state police, insist on grazing roots." Uh, that's the board caption for the punch underneath your several riders. Opposition party, uh, Fanny Ferrer, Capet's president for saying state police not an option. Ohaneze plans meeting. President dismisses plea for Namdi Kanu's release. We have to go back to grazing roots to address farmers' headers clashes. Uh, that's according to the president saying all of these issues are cultural concern. And away from uh, the board caption, you also find debt servicing gobs 76% of revenue. Experts, Buhari, disagree on borrowing. All of that uh, is also on the Punch newspaper. Finally, federal government releases Gazette declaring bandits terrorists. And Southwest governors, San, attack Malami, IG, AGF and falls allege impunity. Lagos sets up committee agreed to give judgment and uh, creditors land. Uh, that's also a rider underneath the caption. Vice President Yemi Osibanjo plans meeting with NLC over subsidy removal and transport palliative. I mean, we're still moving with that plan of 5,000 hours for transportation. And Senate probes the PBE alleges unremitted. $679.4 million rent on ports concession. That's also another caption uh, you find right there. No cuts case stops Balogun from becoming Olubadon. Kingmakers are quoted on that. And let's see if we can take one or two uh, just before we move away from the punch newspaper. Soldiers invade Ogun community, kill two, and label victims Boko Haram terrorists. Sylvester Father, Father not kicks against legal advice freeing suspect. Now, this is some of the headlines uh, you find on the Punch newspaper this morning. Well, now to the Nigerian Tribune. Big story there says, federal government formally declares bandits as terrorists. I have no interest in who emerges my successor, says uh, President Buhari. And also, two staff members killed. Three expatriates missing as bandits attack Zungem Hydro Dam. Zungeru, I beg your pardon. Um, I hope to see my son before I die. Father of Abdul Mutalab uh, jailed in the U.S. for terrorism, says. And also, Ikoi Building Collapse Tribunal blames incident on erosion of um, professional ethics and due diligence. Oromoni's death. Lagos exonerates Doan College students and staff. Um... 2022 budget, Nigeria to pay more for non-alcoholic beverages. And uh, also on the Nigerian Tribune, federal government orders probe into a lefe attempted jailbreak. Those are the stories. Oh, well, Magodo, Lagos to set for 549 pl uh, plots for Shangisha landlords. Those are the stories on the Tribune. Away from the Tribune, uh, let's check out the Daily Independent newspaper. And uh, the board header reads... No political solution for Namdi Kanu. That's what the president is quoted to say. You have several riders underneath that bold caption. List condition to sign Electoral Act Amendment Bill. Says government has declared bandits terrorists and cattle grazing routes to resolve headers and farmers clashes. Says he has no preferred candidate for 2023 presidency. Talking about the Magodo tussle, Lagos to allocate land to 549 judgment creditors. 2023, APC enemies rooting for Jonathan as party candidates. Uh, that's also another caption uh, you find this morning. And the P, I beg your pardon, the BPE failed to remit $679.4 million from port concession in 10 years. That's what Senate is quoted to say. 
Tension in Oshun as APC reconciliation team meets Aregba Shola and Oyetola. Uh, committee reconciles Gombe governor and predecessor. Uh, this is some of the uh, riders um, or the rider you found underneath the board caption. IGP stops police training that dehumanizes recru uh, recruits or recruits. And that's also another story or caption you find on the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. Buhari comfortable with killings in the land. Are you is quoted on that? Criticizes president for saying state police not an option. Lagos clears five Darwin College students and staff of Orumoni's death. These are the headlines on the Daily Independent newspaper. Finally, on the leadership, it's clear APC won't hold convention in February. Windows closed as notification time to INEC elapsed Friday. 2022 budget, federal government imposes 10 naira tax per liter on soft drinks. Songwolu stakeholders okay withdrawal of police from Bagodo estate. And also, Akere Dulu warns of looming jailbreak in Ondo. We can also find here Okadibo's wife replaces Ararume on NNPC board. Uh, 2023, I will keep my successor a secret, says, uh, says President Mohamed Buhari. And of course, finally, federal government declares bandits terrorist. Mr. Ayer Talk, good morning. Once again, thanks for joining us. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you. All right, uh, we're just going to start from the last story that I read. The federal government has finally declared bandits as terrorists. Uh, are you excited? <laughs> excited. Um, better late than never. I've always at all times had a position here that the bandits are getting a lot too emboldened by our ineptitude and our complacency. Uh, we seem to be um, either fearing them or accommodating them or at best tolerating them. And looking at the level of, of mayhem, looking at how vicious they are, looking at how heartless they have been in killing Nigerians, how ruthless they have been, I, I think that um, it's been a long time coming. And um, uh, I, I think that you know, about, I, if, I'm, if I remember very well, that should be on the 15th of November, a court had declared them terrorists. And the, uh, our dear Attorney General, uh, Mr. Malami, didn't think it necessary. It took him all of almost two months, at least seven weeks. Now, try to contrast this with what happened with IPOP, 48 hours. 48 hours within when they were um, uh, declared by a court of competent jurisdiction as terrorists, it was gazetted, 24 hours. But these people, it has taken all of seven weeks, going to two months for it to be done. And when you hear the narratives and you see the body language and you see how emboldened they are, you cannot but just ask ourselves, what is the honest story about these terrorists. I think I can boldly say that now, though before now, for me, as far as I was concerned, they've been terrorists. The second thing is that there are rules of engagement within the military, and there are certain things you do, and it gets into the court of human rights violation. The way that you deal with um, secessionists is different from the way you deal with um, people that you call... Um, you know, um, maybe kidnappers, and the way you deal with bandits, and finally, the way you deal with terrorists. You are allowed to use maximum force without not minding whatever collateral damages, I mean, within reasonable extent, you know, for you to get them out. For instance, you know, uh, my, my friend and brother, El Rufai, has always said, you know what, just, just level the forest. Get all of them out. There will be collateral damages. I agree, but for goodness sake, even, you know, a friend of mine had an accident, an extremely rich person. He was, I mean, he could afford anything. And he was just pushed down, and his hand, he had um, this fracture on his hand. Now, because of how he was bleeding, he could afford any air ambulance to anywhere in the world. 
But if the bleeding was to continue for the next one, maybe next, say, four hours, he would die. So they told him, guy, it either we amputate this hand so that you live, or we manage it and see how we can get you out, and we can't manage the blood, and you may die. It was a hard decision because he had all he needed to be able to treat the hand. But for him to stay alive, he had to just take a family decision and say, cut it off. They cut off the hand, and they were able to treat him. Today he's alive and well, but he's lost an arm. So you cannot, if you want to eat an omelette, you may have to break the shell no matter how much you love it. So for where we are, we may need to say these people are killing us. They are killing our economy. They are killing our people. They are killing our mindset. Everybody now lives in fear. Trauma has become one of the biggest problems of this nation because you can't, there's trepidation in the land because of these people. So we may need to take a hard decision. And I think this is the first oh. step to being able to take that hard decision. Ms. Because Ms. Talk. Being as terrorists, they can use maximum force on them now. Well, Ms. talk. you know, I'm, I don't know if you would agree that the answer cannot simply always be maximum force. We're dealing with a situation where persons either, you know, you know um, fallouts from Boko Haram and, you know, Iswap, or, you know, simple, you know, persons who just have, you know, found ways to arm themselves have continued, you know, to, you know, um, terrorize Nigerians, kidnap, kill, burn down villages, you know, kill people in their dozens for years now. Um, the answer cannot simply be maximum force, bombardment, and some of all of that. We have numerous security agencies that have been set up. We have the DSS, we have the NIA, we have many of them that have, you know, continued, you know, to be in existence in Nigeria, but don't seem to have the answers to banditry, intelligence gathering, and, and the likes. Um, can, you know, we always, or should we always look for maximum force, bombardment, calling in the army, you know, every single time that there is a situation like this? And also to, to chip in, uh, should, because, you know, the law is very explicit about the issue of mother. I mean, the constitution, it makes provision. And at the end of the day, the end result for all of this is usually for this group and uh, this group of persons, whether you talk about the ESWAP or the Boko Haram or the bandits, as it were, you talk about death. And so do we, like he's mentioned, need to use force where... Uh, death is death, and of course, there are penalties for those who engage in these vices. Or vice. Can we always? Is not the same thing. Can we? I'm sure you get the distinction. You know, there's this song by I think it's uh, Kenny Rogers. He says, "You don't have to fight." to be a man. But he says, sometimes you have to fight because you are a man. That's the point. We have tried to use this pesticide and romanticize these people for a long time. How long are we going to continue this way? For how many years have we not said, oh, you know, kinetic force is not always the answer. Have we even used it first before you say, I mean, must we always? We have, we have been using it. We every now no, and then in the news not. we hear reports no, 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 no. Of, of bandits no, being killed not. in their dozens. We hear reports of of the air force bombarding uh, bandit territories. So it's not it's not new that we have used force. You know, if you are saying now we're going to be using super tucano jets in in bandit territories and the likes, we haven't fixed our problem with the borders and how porous our borders are. We haven't fixed the challenges with arms proliferation across Nigeria. We've not, you know, equipped our Nigerian police force enough to be able to take action in, you know, these communities. We cannot simply always really just call the army have all we, the time. And that's the, the word, point that I'm making. I have concern with the word always. Have we really deployed? Why do you buy? Do you know the cost of one to cannot get? Didn't we think through the process? Please, this is a lot of money that could have been used for education, healthcare, infrastructure. We use them to buy to Colonel Jet. Like somebody says, you don't blow your trumpet and ask him, is his trumpet a toy? 
You buy a trumpet because you want to blow a trumpet. A trumpet is not a toy. But that's not the point. Let me tell you where I want to be in line with you. In every battle, the strategy means that you have the top, the mid, the bottom. Okay? So there is this, this the moment you know that they can blast off the whole of this area, that knowledge alone, without the action, makes the people to say, guy, we better just think of an, a way out. That's game one. Game two, I've said this time and time again, if you want to turn off the light, deprive that flame of oxygen. Start it of oxygen and eventually the flame will go off. If you have a candle and you have a bigger bowl, especially if it's transparent, put the bowl over the candle and you'll discover that with time, the flame goes off because you've starved it of the oxygen that it needs to be able to operate. What is the oxygen of insurgency? It is the young people that they use, they recruit into their army. Why are the young people recruited? Is it love of their ideology or out of having lack of means of livelihood? And the answer is as clear as day. It's because of lack of, you know, um, a, a means of livelihood. So what do you do? The cost of the Tokano jet before now, if I were to be their advisor, I'll say deploy it into maximum deployment of production opportunities, job creation, enlightenment, education of the people. And these children would rather be in school than well, be in the forest, on the forest. Well, they would rather be with their parents. So I agree with you that kinetic is not always the answer, but we have failed in the other arm of you know, sniffing off the oxygen, taking the wind off their sail. Well, so it has to be a Mr. holistic Ayatok. approach of stick um, and carrot. Yeah, we've got, we, we would have to move on to something else, you know, but I would also agree that you cannot, you know, set up factories and, you know, education in, a, in an environment that isn't safe. So it needs to be safe first. Um, but it's a, it's, an, it's, a, it's a bigger conversation, you know, that uh, we would have to have. All right, just before we look at, you know, the punch newspaper, you know, the case with insecurity, as much as we would say, yes, there's constant, uh, you know, uh, the issue of unemployment is, you know, top on the list. Well, you also want to agree with me with the fact that uh, uh, th there seemed to be some kind of affiliation with uh, being from a particular tribe. Because I, I've also read where uh, these persons have demanded that they want to have a face-off with the president and they want to have a budgetary allocation. And so, therefore, it could just be, you know, uh, a tribe issue that we, the set of, set of persons from a particular tribe, and therefore, um, I don't know why they think that they have to demand of the president to have a meet with them and all of these other issues surrounding it, but not necessarily the fact that um, employment might just be, you know, one of the concerns. But moving away from that, I, I'm hope, I, I was hoping and I wish that, you know, we had more time to talk about this issue. On the Punch newspaper, the PDP on orders kick as the president dismisses and insists on uh, grazing roads. Now, the president had said that, you know, state policing is not the solution to all of the insecurity uh, uh, situation that we're faced with as a country. And he likened that to the relationship between local government and, you know, governors or state government. And to say that the relationship is not very cordial, as you constantly see, constantly see the domination of state government or, you know, the state government over the local government. But I would like to share your thoughts on that briefly as we uh, proceed. Yeah. I, I, I will say this. The first is that um, I've said a story here when I went to the World Bank with the former CM in Madame Okonjo, talking about land use act. They said... It will be difficult for you to expunge it for your con from your constitution, but let's work around it. That's what they said at the World Bank. Let's work around it. Our president, with all due respect, has a certain fixation. Luckily for us, we have less than two years. Let us work around him because he just, there's a way his mindset is, and which, in my opinion, is a cake, it's anachronistic. It is, it is it's like the time, the land that time forgot. Grazing roots, 
Let him trace it and let it go through Asso Rock and let us bring down Asso Rock so that cows can pass. I think we've gone beyond that. But you see, I think it's at a stage where Mr. President's mindset will not change too easily on it. So let's, luckily, it's not when he got the first term and we have eight years to deal with. Right now, I mean, his, his rule is almost over because politics has started. So let's manage the situation. When the new government comes in, they will be able to settle this problem, make sure that ranches are created, make sure that these herdsmen who are Nigerians like any other Nigerian are given means of livelihood. I was one of those that advocated that the Niger Deltans who are fishermen, their, their means of livelihood is being taken away from them. So we should give them the 13% but government to be able to, to, to create alternate means of livelihood for them. At the same time, I will be one of those advocating that whatever is needed to be done for these headsmen who are also Nigerians to have ranches and proper means of livelihood because I'm not going to have a fellow Nigerian trek through the, the forest in the name of this is custom and tradition. So do I you agree with the president that tradition. state policing is not a solution to the, uh, the security challenges that we're faced with as a country? I listened to that uh, interview and I heard him talk about state policing. And in my opinion, he was a little bit incoherent because I was really trying to understand exactly the paradigms he was, um, the perspectives that he had. And for me, it was not very clear. The analogies he was giving, they didn't just quite settle with me to show me the lines of thought, the clarity in the lines of thought, the argument being put forward to tell me that, did he understand what state policing really means? I think, like he said, when they asked him about um, restructuring, he said, exactly what do you understand by restructuring? I need to ask him exactly what does he understand by state policing? It's not an abolition. Okay, how about the, the judiciary? There's independence of the judiciary. And why is the governors using, not using it to make sure that none of us exist and everything? I understand how these things work. But you see, when you realize as a governor that sooner or later you're going to leave the field, time will not permit for me to give some of the ex examples that I've had. But I believe that policing is local, it's national, it's international, it's corporate best practice, and you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Right. So I just think that um, he's, he's not probably as informed as we would expect him to be on the concept of state policing. Oh, well. But, but he um, actually you know, like him that... Concept on, on other things also, you know, not just state policing, because, you know, if you're talking about that interview um, and other interviews, you know, it's pretty much the same experience that we, you know, Nigerians have had, you know, and the same reactions Nigerians have had, you know, after every interview with the president. You know, in the, on, on the question with regards to state police, he started speaking about traditional rulers and, and the likes um, exactly. and the importance of traditional rulers. Um, quickly speak on the Doan College um, issue, um, Sylvester Romo, the 11-year-old boy. The Lagos State government has said that the five accused and uh, the staff of the school have no questions to answer with regards to murder or involuntary manslaughter. It, it, it's an extremely sensitive issue to me that I, I, if I had my way, I would not... Um, I would not like to comment on it because I may use words that are not appropriate. And what I usually do is on situations that I'm, I feel extremely emotional about, I, I like to give myself period of um, deep breath. I listen to all your analysis and everything. And I think that the time has come when every life must matter. And secondly, there must be consequences. A little child is the life is snuffed off that boy, and I mean, it's just, it's just. I don't know. Can we please permit me to 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 pass? I beg, I beg of you, please. As we can, please. Um, Messiah, talk. You know, we we will, you know, make plans to, of course, bring you in on you know an extensive discussion on some of all these things um, that we've already started today. You know, m you know, very likely. I don't, I'm not sure how soon, but we'll, of course, reach out to you and, um, you know, put that together. But, you know, for now, we are out of time. Thank you very much for always joining us and for making our time uh, to speak with us and to speak with Nigerians. We wish you a very interesting day ahead. 2022 is yours for the taking. Go for it. God bless you. All right. Many thanks. All right.
Stay with us. Uh, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we're moving into sharing with you what happened on this day in history. And of course, right after that, a new herbal drug that seems uh, uh, being found to be effective against COVID-19 that, of course, was uh, the, you know, put together by the Afe Babalola University. We'll talk about that uh, right after Today in History. Stay with us here on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. <laughs>